steps, heart rate, calories burnt, blood oxygen, wearables can drown us in data. If though you want to be able to use one measure to represent your cardiorespiratory fitness and your oxygen efficiency, well a VO2 max test does that. It may also be the best single measure for your life expectancy. The thing is, you usually have to go through this. Start feeling that test push you, you push back. On. The dreaded exercise test pushing me to my limits. We're over 10 minutes. Oh yeah, you're 10.15 now, <laughs> oh, keep going. Loads of data comes out of this, but the important bit, the VO2 max estimation, is the number that describes your cardiovascular fitness. It's the measure of how much oxygen your body consumes whilst going through this. It's a really good effort. And it does this to your oh, hair. What right are these? It was so frustrating because it wasn't actually feeling that difficult and then suddenly it got really hard, my legs just couldn't keep going. Yeah, that is kind of how it goes. But you did a great job, okay, that was a great effort. We think actually you should, based on your age and size, um, uh, be achieving a score of 29.5. Uh, you're actually achieving a score of 37.5, so you're 127% of your predicted score or 27% better than you're supposed to be. Thank you. Well, that's great to know, but it's not actually about testing me today. It's about testing something else. The exercise test may be the gold standard, but a new device from Danish startup Ventrojet aims to do a similar job without the hard work. So what we can do with this small sensor here is we can go in and measure the vibrations in the chest caused by the beating heart. We do that by you lying down, actually, and then measure for 40 seconds. The brain behind all of this is our algorithm and then taking that heart reading into it. And then we can assess the view to max. You can also get those readings from devices like an Apple Watch, a Fitbit, an Aura Ring. How different is that to those devices? So what the difference between this and those devices is we were able to do a spot measurement. So I can pull anyone in from the street and actually get an accurate view to max right here, right now. They need several months of recordings from you. Okay. There you go. That's it. That's it. And then you line up. Okay. Age, weight and height are entered into the app and you're ready to go. It's intended, certainly at first, for use by doctors as a more efficient, practical and for some with medical conditions, safer option. So we have the results ready. Great. If you want to see where you're at. Initial trials showed a 12% error ratio, but that's improving as the algorithm does. And for me, it closely matched my 37.5 on the bike with a score of 39. Would you consider that negligible? Yeah, I would consider that negligible, right? So it's clear here you have a really high view to max as we also saw on, on the CPAD uh, test, right? What else can it tell me? Because obviously that sounds good, but I'd love some more information. One thing is your number, right? But what we actually would recommend people is getting their view to max tested quite frequently to measure the projection, right, of how are you developing. It's fitness, but also if you're, if you're a smoker, you can stop smoking. There is something on your, sort of your diet. So, in, and also generally just losing weight can also improve your view to max. We don't need you to run a marathon tomorrow. You might be able to do it. But some people might, right? Might not. So it's an element of we just need people to do a little bit more exercise than what they do today. Well, I've definitely no plans to run any marathon. But for many, even going through these sorts of tests can be intimidating. So the prospect of a device being able to do something like this could come as a relief.